The frames we steamed in last week were ready to come out, and we started out the day by fastening those. So cool, I guess um, we can get set up and do the same thing on the other side and then get it clamped down well and we'll get to making another set of bronze floors. After those were in place, I removed the lower ribbons so I could start cutting the templates for the bronze floors that would go in here. I planed out any high points in the center line where the plate had to sit. So this was the rest of my day, bending the wings for the new floor. I had developed a pretty good system for this back when we did the other bronze floors, so it went pretty smoothly. It just takes time and patience to do it. In the background, you can see Steve working on fitting the sole beams, and we'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. Once the wings were done, I cut out the vertical plate on the table outside. And after a while, all the pieces were ready for welding. The material for the second broad strakes is all scarfed up and ready to go, but before we can get those planks on the boat, we had a few things that we need to take care of first. One of those was steaming in the pair of frames up forward by the forefoot where we had the kind of the big gap because we couldn't cut the socket into the stem. So we got those frames bent in a few days ago. We gave them a couple days to solidify and get happy in their new shape. And then we popped them out, gave them a coat of oil and the anti-fouling paint, and we installed those. Once those are installed, we could get to work on making a bronze floor for there. So Alex worked on that for the last day. And I ran down the boat and worked on fitting all of the sole beams. So the sole beams go from frame to frame across the boat. And they end up being basically the floor joists for inside of the boat in the living space. And since some places that sole, like in the stem, it goes up a little bit at an angle. When we put those beams in, they wouldn't sit flat on the top of them. So the tops need to get beveled 
and with the twist of the frames in a few places we needed to do some work on them so that they nestled in nice and tight against the frames. So why don't we hop in the boat here and I'll show you how I fit those. Alrighty, so to fit these sole beams I started by running a string fore and aft at the height of the beams and we had this set up previously so it was really easy, the nails were already there. And then I would go to each one and without touching the string lift it up until I was just hovering ever so slightly below the string and then throw a clamp on there and this is where I wish I had eight hands so once we have it clamped just below the strings we can tell on the string how basically the floor inside the saloon is going to land on the beams and because of the twist in the frames and because of the angle on the keel and some of the places this timber ended up just a little bit cocked uh, so we'd pull a measurement and find out if it was cocked for or aft and how much and then take it over to the power planer and just zip that off so that we could angle that top so it would be in line with the floor and then once that was done we'd come through and decide whether or not we needed to inlay where the bronze was a little bit so it would sit tight to the frames or depending on if it was fore or aft on the frame, or depending on how much the frame twisted at which station it was, we might need to do a little bit of letting in on the outside edge so that it sits in touch, flush and tight to the frame. Each one of them was their own little different problem. Uh, and a couple of them, like this one, sat really close to flat on the top, so close so that they're not really worth messing with. Uh, and then all we had to do was cut the ends so that they were the right length and drill through so that we could put in the fastenings. So installing them this way was pretty easy. And now we can bolt them all in and we can put on the first broad strake and shape the ends a little bit. And uh, all the sole beams will be in. So we get a little higher in the planking, we'll be able to put some boards on here and actually have a flat floor to walk around in, which will be really nice. But before we could finish with fitting and installing the sole beams, we would have to weld up our new floor. So, we brought out the welding blankets and soaked some sheets around the work area and got to it. These are the tabs that will hold the sole beams. The beams will get fitted once these are in place on the floor and the floors are bolted down. The floors are only tack welded in the boat, and everything needs to come out of the boathouse and over to the garage to get finished up. That should do it. So we just got to throw that puppy in the sand blaster and give it a quick clean up and we can install it in the boat. But it's supposed to be in the low 90s today. It's supposed to be over 80 degrees Fahrenheit by like 10 o'clock this morning. So I don't even know what time it is. I think it's like 8 in the morning. Um, so I'm really glad that kind of busted hump this morning and got that done because it is, <laughs> it's already getting hot and humid. So time to clean up, get some breakfast and uh, we'll see about getting this puppy sand blasted and installed today. After sandblasting, we got ready to bolt down the floor starting with the anti-fouling paint. Once dry, we could start drilling in the holes for the hanger bolts. We're still using this contraption to drive in the bolts without wrecking the threads. We went into more detail about this when we were installing the first bronze floors.
And some of you may have noticed already that this floor does not have a limber hole. There's a good reason for that. This floor will act as a dam up forward, catching the water coming from bringing in the anchor chain. All that possible water and mud will get stopped at this floor and then picked up by a bilge pump here. The next morning, Steve selected materials to make the last of our soul beams. This morning we're up in the stem and we are wrapping up installing all of the sole beams. And the sole beams are what the floor inside the cabin, inside the boat lands on. So in the midship it was pretty simple, the angles weren't very dramatic, but up here as we're starting to go up the stem, the angles are increasing a lot. So you can see we have the strings here that mark the height of the sole beams. And on the forward edge we're just under half an inch from the string and we're almost touching on the back edge. So we need to take about half of an inch off of this back edge, put an angle on it, and that way the uh, sole inside the cabin will sit flat on those beams. It's the same process we did amidship, but um, back there the angle is a lot less pronounced. So we were only taking off like an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. So we just did that by hand and by eye with the power planer. But this is more dramatic, so we'll probably uh, take them upstairs and run them through the little table saw. And if we go a little farther forward, we didn't end up putting on the tabs for them because there's just not really enough room. So those are gonna be a little bit different. Let's go check those out. A little tighter up forward here. So you can see up forward, there's not really much room between where the top of our vertical plate on the bronze floors is and where the top of our sole beams need to be. So what we decided to do is just mill up a bit taller stock and that way that can get fit up to the string. We can cut the angle and everything and we'll just bolt it right through the uh, vertical plate on the bronze floor into it. Uh, so right now these are probably taller than we need them to be, but we milled them big so that we can cut the angle, we can drill the holes and bolt them, see where all that lands, and then we'll skim whatever off the bottom we can so that we don't have these massive honking beams up here. But this should be easier than trying to finagle in some tiny little tabs. And way up here the floor is so small and so tiny that there's not really going to be a, you know, you're not going to have a dance party up here in the stem, so they're not going to see that much stress. Um, and it's only two of them out of the entire boat, so pretty easy, not a big deal. Um, yeah, so let's go get all these cut, drilled, fit, and installed.
With all the floors fitted, we were ready to begin bolting them into place. We won't be putting the Dolphinite on today, as this is not the final install, but they do need to be in place so we can fare the ends where they will be touching next to the planking. All the beams are bolted in, and all we had left to do with these was to fare the ends up. And we got done right before we received a very special delivery to the boathouse. John from Hanson Marine and Brooke from Nanny Diesel came by to bring us Arabella's brand new engine. We had left the spot open when we built the second floor to build this gantry to get the motor up here. And with a little rigging and a lot of help, we had pretty smooth time getting this upstairs. We got the sole beams all installed yesterday before the diesel arrived and now our next mission is to go through and just trim up the ends and get everything smooth and fair. So the hull, it's, you know, it's shaped fore and aft and when we put in these sole beams we just cut them at 90 and bolted them in. So now the next step is to take a batten and just fair past them. You can see it's hitting here a little bit on the aft corner. Now we just got to take the hand saws and the spoke shave, the file, whatever seems like it's going to be best. We'll have to play around a little bit and just shave this back a bit so that the batten slides right up past it nice and smooth. And then once we get that done, we'll be able to hang the next plank. And before we go and work on that, we're just going to clamp a ribbon a little bit higher than the floors or than the sole beams so that we have room to work. And that way we'll make sure that all of these frames are exactly where they need to be for when the plank goes on. Because they do move in and out ever so slightly. Uh, so we can get all that lined up and get these shaved back. And then we can put on the second broad strikes. And the reason we're doing these now is that we can let them stick out when we fit them. And it's going to be a lot easier cutting and shaping as opposed to trying to scribe them and fit them down inside the hull. And when we put them on, they're bolted in where they need to be, but we didn't put any dolphinite in. So if you find out that they're in the way when we go to install tanks or systems or anything like that, we can just bolt them out, take, pop them out, and pop them back in. And when we're sure that everything is situated, then we'll do the final bedding on them down the road. But right now, they're all locked in place nice and solid so that we can work on them and get their final shape.
Yeah, no. Eh. You can see it's kind of burnishing it as much as it's actually sanding it. But I'm wondering about looking online real quick at Woodcraft and see if they have the shaping discs that go into a grinder like that that have that are for the face, like the turbo plane or the carbide toothed one. And that would just like annihilate that really fast and easily. Maybe too fast and easily. We tried some hand tools to clean up the edges of the sole beams here. And because it's end grain and it's such short end grain, uh, we were having a little bit of a challenging time. So I decided to run to the store and pick up a new bit for the grinder and give that a crack. So I went and got one of these puppies that are made for wood carving. And it's a bunch of tungsten little spikes in it. Uh, and it just spins and it eats the wood away. And I ran down the starboard side with it and it worked really well. Left a decently smooth finish and it removed the wood very, very quickly, almost scarily quickly. Uh, so yeah, super happy with it. Uh, did the job much, much better and faster than trying to do it with the spoke shaves or the little Japanese saws or anything. So we'll fire through the port side here and hopefully it'll go as quick and smooth as the starboard did. Always do a little more as we hang the planks. Good, we're gonna have to start moving here. We're gonna start hitting the brace up there. 